Good evening and welcome to the Finance Subcommittee meeting of the Brockton School Committee. Today is Tuesday, May 17th, and the time is 6.06 .06 p.m. Um, I am going to establish a quorum before we start. Um, Mr. Tim Sullivan? Here. Mr. Tony Rodriguez? Here. Mrs. Ehlers? Here. Mr. Homer? Here. Mrs. Sullivan? Here. And Chair is present. So we do have a quorum. The first item on our agenda is the FY 2023 budget update. And I believe, um, Superintendent, are you going to go first? Or is it? Um, yeah, I'll start. Sure. Um, so this is obviously the detailed budget uh, that Chris will go over. Um, just want to bring you um, to the attention of um, right now the total, total funding of all funding sources is Two hundred and twenty million nine hundred and sixty seven thousand five hundred and sixty two um, so tonight obviously we'll go through this answer any questions that you have um, and then obviously next week um, we'll have uh, the budget um, hearing public hearing on the budget and we would have um, the special school committee meeting to approve the budget to send it to uh, the city council we have to be in front of the city council on Monday June 6th um, I'll get the exact starting time. They usually start at 7, but they might start at 6 when they do budget hearings. But we're on the first night of three budget hearing nights that the City Council has. We go um, on the first night, which is Monday the 6th, uh, and I'll get the exact time when that starts. Um, sometimes they, they make them 6 o'clock, but I'll find out if it's a 6 or 7 o'clock start. But, um, so this will be the process, and then again, if you feel... Um, that we need to have, um, we have a finance subcommittee meeting next Tuesday, an hour before the school committee meeting, but if you need, feel that after tonight you need to have another one somewhere between now and next Tuesday, we can obviously schedule another one. So I'll have Chris walk us through, but on the second page, um, I had Jess go through the enrollment numbers. Um, so this is from 2019 to 2022. Um, as you can see, and, and this is as of May 2nd of each of these years, um, in 2019 we had 16,600 students, um, and now in 2022 on May 2nd we have 15,236. So as you can see, um, enrollment has dropped. Uh, COVID has had a lot to do with that, um, and I believe in 2000. I want to say 16, 17, we were close to just over 17,000. So um, probably from about 2017 to 2022, we're down about 2,000 students. So um, we ha we'll reflect that drop in the budget with some savings and um, reductions in staff through attrition. So I'll have Chris take us through. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Um, as the superintendent stated, this is our full and final proposed budget to the school committee. Um, total budget, $220,967,562. Uh, now we'll start with the net school spending uh, first. <clears throat> so as the uh, superintendent stated, the enrollment uh, really drove uh, and steered this budget. We really need to get everything in line based on our funding from the state. Uh, so we needed to look at, you know, class sizes and pretty much the whole district and move things around. So, and as the, also, um, we were down, as the superintendent stated as well, uh, about 2,000 students. <clears throat> on page four, um, all of you, I believe, are familiar with this. This is our budget development plan. Um, I had reference last week that I came in with a budget figure, chapter 78 of 206 million, uh, came in a little higher at 206 million, 317,562. Um, and we balanced the budget to 220 million, 967. Uh, page five are, is my proposed budget reductions. Um, certified position reductions by unfilled positions. Now, um, all these positions are regular ed. They will not affect special ed or bilingual. 
Um, so the first is certified position reduction through unfilled positions, 21 various positions, K through 12. Uh, certified position reductions by retirement, that's about 22 positions there. Six positions through our, certif six certified positions through our retirement incentive that we offered this year. Uh, nine para custodian administrative assistants through retirements and 11 para custodian and administrative assistants through, uh, again, our early retirement incentives. Which brought that total savings to just over $2 million, what we're projecting. Um, below, other reductions for the FY23 budget. Uh, you have um, reduction uh, in certified additional personnel through breakage. Now, breakage refers to staff members who leave the district that are making a higher salary than the ones that are coming in that are on a lower pay, sc on a lower pay scale. Um, you have reduction uh, in natural gas fuel costs, electricity. Again, I brought up the COVID medical waiting rooms. Hopefully our numbers continue to go down so we won't need those rooms for, fu for future time. Uh, and then pre-buying, tools, housekeeping supplies, and postage, uh, which brings a grand total of budget reductions of $4.5 million. That's what we, this is what we use to balance the budget this year. Because as you, if you recall, we were hoping for another $4 million from the state, but that didn't come to fruition, so. Um, next page. So now these are the more detailed pages. Um, I'll go through it briefly, but again, um, I wanna offer some time if you wanna reach out to me uh, for time to sit down, I'll be happy to go through it with you, especially for our newer members. I'm happy to go through it. It gets a little daunting. There's quite a few line items here. Um, so the first one, additional personnel, um, undesignated positions. This is unknown hires that, you know, school district, um, there's so many ebbs and flows, so we don't really know. There could be changes in, you know, classrooms and programs, so we may need to hire more, uh, more uh, staff. So, so I'll give you an ex figure. example as the pre-K. Um, right now we have several students um, who have IEPs who have been um, as early intervention has identified um, to have, be into pre-K classrooms. Um, and these are three and four year olds. So we know that we're gonna need staff and open some pre-K classes next year. So this is why you would see. Um, then we also have the new launch program as you know, that we're moving forward with our bilingual department, and that will take um, some staff as well. Um, so some of it's through the reallocation, but it will also help to make sure we start to include more students um, and move them into regular ed um, quicker from the bilingual classes, which we, you know, through the launch program. Thank you. Okay. Um, next page. Oh, I'm sorry. I think we were going to wait with the questions okay. till the end. Right. Um, you want to wait till the end for the questions? Okay. Unless anyone has any questions right now. Um, Kathy Ellers, I know you have probably a question for just me. Just one question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe Kathy. We can wait. We can wait till the end if you want. That's fine. What, whichever you prefer. Let's wait till the end. Unless fine. something uh, jumps out and someone has a question on something, then just you know let me know. Otherwise, we'll. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so uh, continuing on, page eight, uh, retirement severance pay. Now this is based on um, individuals who said they were gonna retire next year. Now this is just an estimate because again, that changes drastically throughout the year. Uh, page nine, uh, professional and curriculum development. So this is for PD for staff members. We estimated at around 200,000. Now, um, please note that we're using a lot of ESSER funds for professional development, so that's why this budget is fairly low. Uh, page 10, uh, substitute part-time employees. Uh, now again, this is a page that you probably wanna look at in a little more detail and then maybe come up with questions uh, down the road, but um, classroom teachers, um, you have a line item for graduation, that's police details. Um, school Microsoft, 365 employee BA stipend, so each school has a BA member that maintains a 365 program. 
Um, then you have system-wide, SPED costs, personnel, home teaching, uh, and then various other programs. Uh, 10A, the next page, just a continuation um, of several different programs. And obviously, this is all personnel services, part-time employment, and substitute. Page 11, uh, earned credit report. Um, this is teacher accreditations. Now, obviously, this is just an, uh, this is an estimate because I can't really project how many accreditations there are going to be out throughout the year. But again, this is an analysis on past years, so it's just a projection. That's as each uh, teachers take graduate courses and move up on the pay scale if they get ma you know ma mass bachelor's plus 15 plus 30 plus doctorates. And masters and doctorates and so. Uh, page twelve, uh, summer employment. Uh, so you have uh, budgets for hourly wages for uh, printing at Central and BHS. Now, obviously, these this is monies that are preparing for the next school year. All the items that need to be printed prior to. Um, and that goes along with, you know, Edison Academy, uh, the tech department, as well as a parent info center. All the items that need to be printed for parents to fill out. And again, that's for hourly wages. Uh, page 13, extracurricular activities. As you can see at the top for all, for the junior highs, uh, we gave $10,000 across the board to all the principals. We left it to the principal's discretion of what they would use those monies for. Um, for the high school, these are all, all their programs, these are all stipend programs for members. Page 14, intramural programs. So these are instructor uh, pays for elementary, middle school, Brockton High School. Page 15, workers' compensation. Again, this is somewhat of a projection. We have some employees who are on workers' compensation. Um, but we did reduce this by a bit, just again, through an analysis and a projection. And then cafeteria employees, uh, that is not uh, maintained through local funding. Uh, the lunch program covers those worker comp cases. <clears throat> uh, page 16, unemployment compensation. Um, we reduce that. We don't foresee any uh, major reductions in staff where we'd be playing unemployment. We're not going to be laying off any staff members, so we thought it would be best we could reduce reduce that line item by 100,000. <clears> Page 17, non-certified buyback. Uh, these are all contractual. These are vacation sick time buybacks for admins, custodians, paraprofessionals, et cetera. Page 18, athletic program. broken up into two pieces, uh, personal services, as well as ordinary maintenance. Uh, no cuts here. <clears throat> Page 19, instructional supplies by location. Um, each location is given a in a budget amount based on student enrollment at that location. Um, now you will notice uh, three zeros on the page. Those locations, there is grant funding that covers those supplies. So those do not need to be locally funded. Page 20, utilities. Uh, we did have a few reductions uh, for utilities. Again, we did a cost analysis. And we found that we could make some reductions um, in uh, natural gas <clears throat> as well as electricity. Page 
page 20A is just a continuation of the utilities, uh, water, sewer, consumption, Comcast, and wireless services. No cuts in these, in these pieces. Page 21, buildings and grounds. Uh, we did have some reductions in this area, um, but we are covering these reductions with pre-buying from this, from this year's budget. <clears throat> so it's, again, we can ask the facilities director to pre-buy toilet paper, um, those sort of uh, items. Page 22, printing. Again, these are supplies for printing. Earlier we were talking about personal services for printing of these items. These are all the supplies. Uh, <clears throat> sick bank cards, uh, handbooks, school calendars, registration forms, so on and so forth. Uh, no cuts here. Page 23, these are all of our major contracted services. Uh, allied waste, uh, frontline, uh, ASOP, and contract services continues on page 23A. Page 24, rentals, leases. Uh, you have 661 Center Street, which will house, I believe, the virtual school. Belmont Street, which is the Promise Academy. Foster Street, the warehouse. Uh, North Main, uh, now that is a typo. That says the virtual school. That's really uh, part of the IT de department, so it's kind of the virtual headquarters for all the virtual. So I apologize for that. <clears throat> and then we do rent the, um, the mailing machine and then the um, ID recognition card machine at BHS as well. Uh, page 25, operational expenses. So again, uh, this is items, uh, parking passes that we need to reimburse the parking authority, uh, recruitment expenses for job ads to be posted in the newspaper, um, school spring. <clears throat> um, one item that may stand out, uh, the attendance. Uh, it says auto liability insurance. Uh, the attendance officers, uh, because they use their personal vehicles and they're also having students in their personal vehicles, uh, they need to have increased uh, insurance liability coverage, so the district incurs the additional cost of that. If I can just interrupt, um, anyone have any questions so far or any comments for Chris? Mrs. Ehlers. Actually, um, before we get there, I just want to acknowledge that Mayor Sullivan is, is um, in attendance and Mrs. Mendez is also in attendance. I okay. apologize for being tardy, Vice Chair. I was stuck at City Hall. Oh, it's so okay. <laughs> um, Mrs. Ehlers. I, first of all, I just wanted to thank you, Chris, because this is the line items. I'm loving it. Thank you so much. It's so transparent, and it definitely gives me an idea of where everything is, where it's going. One question that I have is on the on page, I think, 15. Page, I'm sorry? 15. 15. No, I'm sorry. Um, page 16. For unemployment compensation the positions that we are not hold on i want to make sure i ask this right so on page five where we have the pro proposed budget reductions these are all positions that have not been filled correct so we're not going to incur costs in unemployment compensation correct okay correct. so want... these these positions are through attrition yep so okay. we're not letting we're not letting people go yeah okay perfect yep. 
And then, um, <clears throat> this probably sounds crazy, but why, do we, why, do, why does our budget have to be so, I mean, I understand the liability insurance, but why does the school committee's budget have to be so high at 211,000? Do, do we actually spend that? Like, is that what we trend? Where is it? What Where page? What page are you it's on? It's on page, oh, please. The one we were just on. So page 25, school committee budget at 211,000. I'm just, uh, honestly, I'm just curious. Is that a lot of money? Is that what we trend? Is there an opportunity there for? Where is it? On page 25, halfway down, like under where it says expense. Oh, budget school committee, expense. yes. Yeah. Yeah, so the, I totally that's, understand that's the that. Big, <laughs> that's 165000 of it. But I mean, the other stuff And the 15000 that, 15, that we, we, you asked about last time? Yeah. Um, we added that in because... Um, there's been members and I think um, have been asked to, you know, go to different workshops, um, visit different school systems, um, so which, which obviously incurs travel costs. We figured we'd put the extra 15000 in Perfect. this year that we haven't had before. So, you know, people have seen things that they yeah. feel that would be good for us. So they said, you know, can we go visit? Um, so we just that's when we you found the extra 15 last time when we what was in there. Yeah, that's that's what it was for Perfect. Yep. Thank you so well, much. We also need to carry live like the uh, superintendent stated We need liability insurance for the yep. school committee. Yeah, so mayor that must happen for the city council to the liability insurance I yeah, I mean the city's self-insured and we indemnify elected officials So I, I I'd have to talk to the HR department yep. on that um but one thing I, I, you should bring up, because I just learned about it. So when we give, like when Mark D'Agostino left and we gave him a plaque and the vice chairman plaque, mm. that, 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 that money gets paid out of there as well from the school committee yeah, expense the side. Miscellaneous yeah, expenses, yeah. yeah, the different citations and stuff yeah, as we well. Give student awards, those yep. kind of things. Sounds good. Exactly. I just wanted clarification, but otherwise sure. everything else looks very similar to what you presented last time. Okay. So Great. thank you. No problem. Mr. Sullivan. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I just had one question. I don't know if it's Chris or Mike. Page 13, the clubs. What, page 13? Yeah, the clubs. And the question was, if there's a zero there, does that mean there is no club? Yes, that means that club hasn't existed. It's still, we, we have to take the book that Ashley and, and Kim and I are working now that we're getting ready to close out a contract. This is like housekeeping things that, you know, when clubs go antiquated, like there's no more scuba club. So, but this is something that's been in here for a long time. So what we do is we go through with the high school and say, you know, what clubs don't exist anymore? Cause it changes. Um, and then we zero them out. And then the next time we will, um, you know, so in the next contract book, we will update it. But this is the current contract book um, that have all the stipends and then we zero out what, what the clubs don't exist anymore because they change from time to time. So Didn't, oh. What is it, Mike? Do we don't have the money to pay for the club director? Or? No, no, no. It just doesn't, there's, there's no interest in these clubs anymore. Oh, okay. So what, the ha what happens is, is that we, the principal has the discretion to use the money if a, pa if a student comes up and says, I want to start a new club, and they have an advisor, and then they have enough kids that want to do it, then we just let them start a new club. Um, we just zero out the ones that basically have, um, they just don't have any participation anymore, so. And in, act, in actuality, zero. I have to, this, I should have left a dollar in those zeros because then that means that it could still be reopened. It can, we can right. still reorganize, so it really shouldn't be a zero. Right. And um, thankfully the mayor did remind me of that, so I appreciate it, Mayor, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I just, just go on the record as, as chair of the school committee, and, and I can speak for Mike on that. If, if there's ever any re-engagement during the academic year, like the ski club, when I went in Brockton High, that was a big thing. The French club was still a big is, thing, actually. right? Ski club's still active. Still active, but I mean, it looks like the Latin club is zero, French club. So if that ever gets re-engaged, we would come up with the money. Absolutely. To, yep. we, we, we would definitely do that. That's a promise we'd make. Yeah. Mrs. Ehlers. That. Especially the young Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> um, just really quick, on the top under extracurricular activities, 
Um, this I'm, sorry, a, I'm sorry, Kathy, I, I, I missed it, I'm sorry. No, 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 that's okay. Under uh, same page, page 13, under extracurricular activities, and this might be a question for Superintendent Thomas, but there's a dollar amount under the champion for student council. Is the rest of those, what you were saying, offended by grant monies, Chris, on the top part of the page? Uh, the, uh, so the, the junior highs? Yes. So the junior highs, so you can see at the top, yeah, the middle schools. So you can see the principal discretions. We give them all ten thousand dollars, so they can use it at their discretion, whatever. So my whatever question program. is: There's a dollar amount under Champion, and so is that all Champion's going to get for Student Council? I'm just that's what I'm asking. How do much is there? It's a thousand forty-four under Champion for Student Council, and so my question is: Do we not have a Student Council at the other mid at the other, you know, middle schools? Or is that funded by That's the funded by the 10,000 if okay. they choose to have it. Okay, okay, that's what I wanted to clarify. Thank you. Mr. S uh, Tim Sullivan. Just one quick question on page 23. The item number three, the uh, footbridge program, Bridgewater State College. I, I was trying to figure out what that is. Um, that's a program our kids attend, um, elementary kids attend, over at Bridgewater State. Um, it's actually a really good program. They, they attend it in the summertime, um, and they do a lot of academic work. They do a lot of um, hands-on projects. Um, I think it's right around, I went to the program, it was virtual the last two years, but the last time I went to it in person, uh, there's about 80 kids. Uh, a lot of them work over at the Moakley Science Center. Uh, they work with Bridgewater State College students, and we have some of our own teachers that work that program as well. Um, it's, it's for fifth and sixth graders, and it really is, provides them with a lot of opportunity and gives them, gets them on a college campus all summer, which really helps engage them and you know, kind of gets them not ready for college, but it actually gives them access to a college campus where a lot of our students don't have at that age. So it's actually an excellent program. Thank you. Mrs. Ehlers. Really quick, only because I'm familiar with this company, but the website is managed by Final Sight. Do we have anybody here that knows how to update the website, or do we have to go back to Final Site to update it? Um, Jess, Jess, knows, Jess yep. has full access to update it, and Perfect. I believe... This, she has two or three people that are her backup. Okay, awesome. So the yep. 25000 is just basically to maintain our relationship with Final Site. Correct. Yep. And we that's use them for support services as yeah, well. Yeah, that's so. the yearly fee okay, of yep. us being a member. Perfect. That's okay. And Thanks. it also includes if there's any um, upgrades for ADA compliance, yep. that, that's included in that money. That was going to be my next question. Thank yep. you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Mrs. Mendez. Mrs. Mendez, just a moment. It's okay. I, thank you. On the same page, on page 23, um, number 25, Police and Fire Department, why did the jump go from 25000 to 60000 Because we've been using a lot more, because we've been so low in our current staffing levels at the, for the uh, school police. We're down eight offices. Um, that's jumped because we have used off we have used Brockton police through details to cover traffic um, at the especially at the Baker the Davis the George the Pluff, um, the Pluff Angelo, the Hancock well. yeah. um, so we have offices that help with traffic at those locations um, before and after school so that's why you see that jump once we um, get our offices through the Academy um, and they come out, and then there's some, you know, more going in soon that, you know, we'd be able to reduce that cost because we'd be able to do that in-house. Um, but right now, being down eight offices, we just don't have enough staff. Our offices cover Brockton High School traffic, and, um, and they do go out and do some, but there's only, only two of our offices that are available to do those traffic posts. And, um, you know, for safety, we, those around, the, our known gets one as well. It's just... As you know how busy it is at schools in the morning. So that's where you see that jump. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Tim Sullivan. Yes, thank you. Page 25. <coughs> 25. Item number one, Murphy, Hesse, Toomey, Lahane. 
the uh, two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. I see it uh, for the last three years. Do they do they use up all that money, or they return money back? Oh, how, oh how we do don't. We, we only pay them for services rendered, so they wouldn't return any back. Um, Chris could get you the total amount of bills. Um, this has stayed pretty constant. Yeah. This amount. That's why we've kept it the same for a number of years. So the reason I'm asking, Chris, this year. We use them. We have a ton of contracts coming up, yep. and they seem to be there. But Wednesday night, we had two of them there. Do we pay extra for something like that? Well, it's not extra. It's just it's what we're budgeting. But I can give you to. I can show you. Uh, give me a breakdown of what we spent from the past few years. We can do an analysis. I can do an analysis for you. Okay. Thank you. That's fine. Yep. And Thank then you. the second one, number two. That's actually. Um, the legal that's the special ed um, legal services done for us by Paige Tobin who actually helped with the new policy for special education and she also attends any um, you know in there's, when there's any difficult situations with uh, advocates um, or anything to do with um, high-level discipline matters um, if the um, if, if a parent has an advocate or an attorney and obviously she's our counsel for the school committee and for administration to guide us through um a lot to do more with discipline law that's number 22 discipline special ed law um and then number one is obviously negotiate that's that's kevin bresnahan and sarah spada for um that go through all our negotiations and deal with all our employee issues grievances and grievances um you know Oh, and then they're with you at negotiations as well. If I can just jump in. So even though we're, we're going over so many right now this year, next year, you know, we're ahead of the game. So we'll see a savings as far as, you know, reviewing contracts and stuff, Mr. Sullivan, where we're just going over these now. Yeah. Um, but in, and I know during accounts review, we still we see a breakdown. So there's always a breakdown of the um, legal fees if you needed to look at that but and again throughout the year we do get um, questions on language in the contract so the attorneys need to be contacted and uh, consulted so that's constant throughout the year mr. Sullivan so that's where a lot of that money goes as well so well, even during you. a non-contract year mrs. Ehlers do we just because you brought this up Chris do we actually do we pay a retainer to them and then it's ad hoc or is it ad hoc from the beginning of the contract and the beginning of the academic year I will confirm that but I believe it's ad hoc as okay. the year goes but I will confirm that for you by the hour though by the oh yes yeah uh, mr. Homer sorry I just wanted to jump I was looking at page 21 um, sorry to jump all around on you guys the vehicle maintenance and repair on the item one on the top of page 21 um, I saw the increase there too does that take into account services and maintenance and things for the, the school buses and um, the other question I had too uh, while we're working on that was that I'm sorry what was that sorry first question so item one vehicle maintenance and repair yep is a $50,000 increase and does that take into account the need for maintenance for the Fleet there'll, of be school another, there'll be another budget uh, for the non the non net for Got the it. school buses, okay. so there'll be yep. so that's additional money. Yep. Okay, correct. So this, these are be uh, yep. facility vehicles, uh, okay, school that, police vehicles, those ones. No. Okay, and then the other question I had was on on twenty three um, number item number eleven was um, frontline um, and the ESOP sub finder, the Web Connect system. There's a hundred and sixty thousand dollar increase on that item there. I just didn't know if that's a, is frontline taking on new services for us are they yeah, so providing they new added services? On a, yep, they added on an additional police uh, piece through uh, HR human resources so that was the uh, that was the additional cost of that line item so is it up lost, to, um, is that from the baseline edge loss no, no. I got we'll have to ask Kathy what's that from they were adding additional services to right. their to the module so we can get you more detail on that Mayor Sullivan, you had a question? Yeah, no, it's just, just a point of information. So because our winter, although some would say it was bad, but it was relatively mild relative to snow and ice removal cost, um, we had a, a cost savings on the city side. So I did authorize DPW Commissioner Pat Hill to buy two additional sidewalk uh, sweepers, um, snowblowers. 
Um, and the, the, really the purpose is to uh, continue the efforts to make sure the sidewalks are safe for the students uh, and then also the pathways with the staff. So it's a sizable amount of money, but I just want to let you know we, we have ordered two additional ones as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Mrs. Um, Mendez. The, was, Jared, which line was the one that you asked the question on? On number 11? Okay. On page 23? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, page, it, line 46, the student mentor services, it went up $200,000. Um, and then also, we, we pay for district review consultants for DESI. Is that what line 52 is? Yes, but that's reimbursed through a grant from the department. Oh, okay. So we <laughs> put it in the budget because we have to pay like we have to put the PO through and pay it, okay. but they reimburse us. All right. So that's part of the MOU. Yep. All right. And then and the mentors, yeah, we did, again, we've added so many mentors. And um, as you know, that we have a home teaching doesn't work for students that were charged with felonies or um, who can't come to school because of weapons or very uh, serious discipline issues. Um, home teaching isn't enough. It was four hours a week under the law, but you know this is to put back into um, back into play our, the program that actually has those students attending um, at a location, receiving mentoring services as well as their academics. Okay. And it's also um, it also um, reflects the additional mentors that we brought on board. And these mentors are all in-house, or some are they are in -house, private? Some are contracted. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. I guess we can continue. Okay. We are um, we are running close. It's six forty-one. Um, I think we're we do, doing pretty good. Yeah, we we do. We have the six forty-five meeting, so I think we're doing good. No, we're right to seven. The, um, nope. Oh, 645 school choice. Oh, sorry. Student, it's okay. Um, so I think we're doing I'll move good it. on time. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it, that's what we're here for. If they have any questions okay. and for you to. And again, uh, please extend any questions afterwards. I'm happy to answer. So uh, I believe we left off on page 26. Uh, professional development. Um, these are not personal services. These are items, uh, materials to purchase in regards to professional development. Page 27, uh, transportation costs, uh, student transportation uh, for the music program, ROTC, um, science fairs, et cetera. <clears throat> and we do subsidize some community school after school programs as well through local funding. Uh, no cuts here. Mike, if you, uh, through you, Vice Chair, if you don't mind, Mike, can you just clarify, because this question was asked to me last year relative to superintendent travel. It's not a lot of money. It's six grand in terms of the scheme of things. But where do you travel? Because Nowhere. There you go. So you can actually zero it out. Yep. I don't go anywhere. I haven't been anywhere. I don't go anywhere. So. Well, you do go to the event on the Cape, but you don't charge for it. So. Yeah, I, yeah. I commute, so yep. there's no charge. It might. Yep. I mean, there's, a, there's obviously a fee mm -hmm. for me to... Um, for me to register for the workshop, but I just wanted you to, to yeah, get I that on the record. Yep, yeah, thank, thank you. you. I don't travel other than my car. <laughs> uh, page 28 uh, tuitions, um, collaborative programs, private day school through special education. Obviously, this is a fairly considerable budget $8.8 .8 million. After dark programs. Ed education tuitions, uh, virtual academy to the virtual academy in Greenfield, and the independence independence academy, just to name a few. Uh, page twenty nine, uh, the technology budget. Now this budget has been um, considerably higher in past years, but um, thankfully for ESSER, we've been able to cover uh, the purchase of laptops and several pieces of equipment, so we've reduced this budget slightly. But again, we're all one-to-one, -one, so it is, it's a considerable budget for the district. 
uh, with hardware and software costs. Page 30, uh, facility maintenance. <clears throat> Again, these are for minor uh, repairs, uh, system-wide, glass, roofs, um, parking lots, such as potholes, uh, lighting, audio repair, and miscellaneous repairs. Again, this is just a projection. <clears throat> Page 31, travel outside state. Uh, for DECA, uh, there's a contractual item agreement with BEA that we need to have $15,000 listed in the budget. And then uh, travel outside of the state uh, for administration, for conferences, et cetera. And that completes the net school spending portion of the budget. I'm happy to answer additional questions. Uh, sure. Mr. Tim Sullivan? Yes, Chris. One question on page. Sure. 25 okay item 10 the fire alarm master box municipal circuit twenty thousand dollars what what is that Chris that's the um, that's the pay the fire alarm company when the fire alarm goes off it automatically contacts the fire department so if somebody pulls the fire alarm or if the fire alarm goes off in the middle of the night at a school because there's some issue um, um, it automatically contacts the, it's, that's the fee to monitor yeah, the fire maintain, alarms 24-7. Yeah, yep, correct. That, that's all the school buildings? Everywhere. Oh, all buildings, all uh, the right. offices, all of them. Yep. Good price. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions before we move on to non-net? Okay. Chris, I think we're ready to go on to the next okay, one. Great. On net budget, uh, this is again a final proposed budget of uh, thirteen million six hundred and forty-five thousand one forty-seven. <clears throat> uh, the one thing um, I really like everybody to take away here um, with the creation of the new transportation department. Um, I know we had talked about mostly when you bring when you develop a new department, you won't see a cost savings for two to three years, but we're projecting a cost savings of nearly three million dollars for the first year so thank you dr Cobbs. <laughs> <laughs> so just uh quickly just to break it down operational expenses of 1.7 million personnel 8.3 million total busing operational costs of just a little over 10 million and then other uh other item, other costs um, for uh, private transportation, so on and so forth. Um, we'll give you a total budget of 13.6 million. Now, obviously, we have some circuit breaker to subsidize that. But uh, again, the real takeaway is the cost savings of um, building our own transportation department and uh, leaving for a student um, nearly three million dollars, and that will just continue to uh, go up. I think everyone's just looking it over. That's fine. That's fine. If anyone has any questions in the meantime. And again, I'd like to reiterate, I know there's a lot of information here, especially for the new school committee members. So please feel free after this, email me, call me. I'll be happy to sit with you and answer any questions you have. Thank you. Any questions or statements? I think we're good. All right. Um, so if anyone does have any um, questions, Chris is always available. You can reach out to him. Um, you know, he said he'd sit down and go over it with you, um, especially some of the new members. E even the seasoned members, you know, it doesn't hurt sometimes to sit down and get a refresher going through some of the budgets. Um, but I think we're good with that. So thank you, Chris. We right. appreciate it. Right. Um, oh, Mr. Sullivan? Just, uh, I'm just wondering, do you need a motion on this? To well, move do we need to approve anything now? Not that I was aware of. I think we're good. All right. Um, so I think we're good with that. Thank you, Chris. Right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Next item on the agenda would be other business. Does anyone have any other business? 
I'm looking for uh, money for turf field. Mr. Rodriguez, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, I can't hear I you. See, I don't see no money for turf field. I know, I know. <laughs> Just waiting for it. I knew he was going to ask. Mayor? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a meeting the other day, Tony, in our office, in my office. It was Mike, myself, Troy, uh, and Chris. Um, when, when Mayor Rodriguez was mayor, when Moses was the acting mayor for six months, uh, and I voted for it as a council president, uh, we bonded uh, for turf fields. Originally, the intent was to use that for the Elder B. Keith Field uh, on Warren Ave. Um, but subsequently, this body voted um, to deem a portion of that as excess. So uh, it's my understanding that uh, that will be a turf field. But the original bonded money, the thought process now, and Mike already has a schematic that was done a while ago, is the Billy Policino field behind uh, the AZF skating rink here at Brockton High, which Brockton high school users, um, youth soccer users, and others uh, could use it. Uh, the belief is that for about three million bucks, we could make it two regulation size um, turf fields for soccer. Uh, lighting may or may not be uh, an issue in terms of um, National Grid giving us an analysis and Eversource, but the thought right now is um, the biggest bang for the buck could be that because we already have the schematic, we already have the architectural plans, and I think that's $3 million that, number one, we could use the bonding, and then we could use uh, ARPA funds to subsidize the difference or potentially we could use a bonding on a different field and we can subsidize the full three million, but we're gonna get two fields out of the Policino field. Thank you. Anything else, Mike? Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, and it would be, right. it could be, and it would be, they'd be multi-purpose. Be right. right, 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 yeah. Football, soccer. Field hockey. Field, field hockey, lacrosse. lacrosse. But they'd be, they would be regulation size, so. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, um, so anything else under um, other business? Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. A motion's been made by Mr. Sullivan. It's been seconded by Mrs. Sullivan. Um, all in favor, show of hands. That's unanimous. Motion, um, meeting adjourned, and we will be coming back. Our next meeting is the public hearing on school choice. We should be coming back shortly. We're gonna take a five five minute break. Thank you. <laughs>